here's $300, here's $200, here's $6,000. That's a lot of money. What kind of medical debt are you looking at? I'm probably over a million dollars in medical debt now. A million dollars? The whole foot was reversed, like, the front of the tennis shoe was back here. Oh my god. Today, over 52 million American adults are living without medical insurance. I always thought that living here, I'd be able to get the, all the health care I wanted. But it's gotten so expensive that a lot of people can't afford it. How did we get here? We got here because we allowed Wall Street to take over our health care system. In 2009, 7 million Americans postponed major surgery due to the high cost of care. The pain gets so bad, it felt like somebody was sticking a knife in it sometimes. Forcing Americans to look elsewhere in the world for help. Why are we now on a train to Mexico? In this episode of Vanguard, we follow American patients who are leaving the comforts of home and their homeland. In the States, I would probably lose my house. So you can walk or you can lose your house. And head to places far and wide in order to get the treatment that they cannot afford in the U.S. This might be the future of healthcare in America. It's just sad that I had to leave America to get good treatment. Some animals are treated better than people here. The moment I woke up in the hospital, I was so grateful to be alive, but I still remember the first thing that they had me do, and that was to sign their paperwork for their billing. <laughs> it feels like I'm being violated by the healthcare system as if it were a stranger on the street who, you know, were to rob me. Lisa Long was just starting a family and working as a surgical technician at a Los Angeles hospital when a devastating car accident turned her life upside down. The whole foot was like reversed, like the front of the tennis shoe was back here. Oh my God. I fell asleep driving, woke up right before impact. I ran into this camper trailer that was filled with a family. I completely demolished it. I could have killed a family. This arm was broken. They said if I wouldn't have been wearing the leather jacket, I wouldn't have kept the arm at all. I have five plates and 20 plus screws. <laughs> Come give mommy love, jeez. In the six years since her accident, Lisa has undergone more than a half dozen surgeries. Today, this mother of a 10-year-old girl walks primarily with the aid of a cane. Miss going to the rec center today? No? Okay, good. She lives in constant pain. After one of Lisa's many surgeries, the 38-year-old developed a staph infection. As long as the hardware, the plates and screws, remain in her body, she must take powerful and expensive antibiotics to control the infection. If she stops, or if the bacteria becomes resistant to the drugs. Eventually, the infection would actually go throughout my blood system. And, you know, I mean, you can die of sepsis like three to five days. So this isn't just like an inconvenience. This is... Is it immediately life-threatening? No. And, and I guess that's the hard problem with the system. If they can just patch something up a little bit so you can come back later and pay more money yeah. to get fixed some more. So you kind of went into this having a lot more knowledge about the healthcare system and probably insurance than most, most Americans, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, you're hemorrhaging money because of the meds. Oh, yeah. 
about 1,500 miles away from Lisa in Houston, is a sports-loving Texan and successful businessman. Cars and fast bikes are just a couple of Kenny Browning's many hobbies. These are firecracker hats. Put it on. Other way. That, that, this protects your neck. Ah, so yeah. flames. Oh, yeah. And you shoot missiles and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I mean, yeah. boom, shoot 100 feet in the air. You clearly are very active. Oh, yeah. Roller skating, snow skiing, uh, hiking, backpacking. You know, I rarely have a weekend that I'm not yeah. I'm uh, even home. Like Lisa, Kenny lives with constant pain the result of an accident suffered years ago. So what happened to your hip? Well, I had actual, I've had a couple accidents on it. I street skate, and what we do is pub crawls on skates. And I was in one of the clubs, and I'd had maybe one beer more than I should have, <laughs> and my feet went out from under me, and all of a sudden I was about that high in the air. And I fell down and landed on my hip. And, you know, I jumped up when, you know, I guys do, I'm cool, don't worry yeah. about it. And I got, and we skated two more miles to the next bar. Oh, my God. And I think that's why I've got arthritis in that hip. Kenny has lost all the cartilage in his hip joint. The pain gets so bad, it felt like somebody was sticking a knife in it sometimes. To repair it, he needs a hip resurfacing operation. I really enjoy working on stuff, but when the pain's so bad, it takes a lot of the fun out of it for me. So this hip resurfacing promises to changed my life back like, like it was. But it's gotten so so expensive that a lot of people can't afford it, you know, and, I, and I'm not exactly poor. You need, you need about four cans of black. Yeah, black. After living with chronic pain for more than six years, Kenny is finally going to get the surgery. But his operation won't be taking place where you might expect. It sounds like a crazy prospect. I don't know what you think of India, but I, I have a certain oh, image in my I head, having, having been there. Right. And India probably wouldn't be the first destination on my mind. It wasn't for me either. <laughs> I always thought that living here, I'd be able to get all the health care I wanted. But to do that surgery, I mean, I don't have $50,000. There, I'm getting seven days in the hospital, including my anesthesiologist, my MRIs, all my nursing care, all my medications and everything and then five days at a nice resort on the beach of, on the Bay of Bengal for $8,800. Do you feel like you are gonna get the same level of care over in India that you would here? That was one of my concerns, but I went on the internet and started finding out everything I could about medical tourism. Medical tourism. It was a concept unfamiliar to Kenny until he heard a story about it on the radio. Now, Kenny is one of an estimated 500,000 Americans who will travel overseas this year in order to receive medical care that they can't afford here at home. Another one of those half million is Lisa Long. I think it's crazy that I have to fly across wherever <laughs> to go get my right? surgeries done, but I'm happy to get them done. Coming up, with over a million dollars in medical debt, Lisa looks beyond the U.S. What are the options? South Korea and possibly Colombia. Are you nervous at all? I mean, you've never, have you ever been abroad? No. Uh -uh. Never been abroad? No. Unable to continue working as a surgical technician because of the injury she suffered in a car accident six years ago, Lisa now works as a house cleaner. Lisa had health insurance at the time of her accident, but was later dropped as a result of the mounting costs of her care. Today, like 52 million American adults, Lisa is uninsured. A lot of people think there's programs out there to help people like you. Nobody's going without health care, nobody's going without treatment. But that's if you choose to be completely indigent. And if anything, there needs to be something for the people in the gray area. I have a lot of responsibilities. I can't afford to just go get on welfare. What kind of medical debt are you looking at? I'm probably over a million dollars in medical debt now. A million dollars? 
how can someone afford to get sick? Well, they you can't. Know. Not here. Wait, so is this? This pill, Zofran, this was $32 a pill. Bills. Mm. 200, 1,000, 2,000. So probably in radiology bills alone for that one day, there's almost four grand, three grand. Here's $300, here's $200, here's $6,000. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, here's one, 132,000. Total charges, $132,000. What does insurance pay for? Well, none of it. So this is a bill for $132,000? Yes. Seriously, what do you do? You can't keep asking people to pay these exorbitant prices for care, and you can't keep shifting more and more of the cost of care from insurance companies to us and expect this system to go on forever. It can't. Wendell Potter is the former head of communications for Cigna Health one of the nation's biggest insurance companies. Today, he's an author and activist for healthcare reform. How did we get here? We got here because we allowed Wall Street to take over our healthcare system several years ago. It doesn't have to be as expensive as it is here. We've allowed that to happen. You have a system that is focused on treating people who have the means to pay for it. 45,000 people in this country die every year. Uh, at least, uh, because they don't have access to care. 45,000 people. That's right. And as people become more aware that uh, uh, we don't have a monopoly in this country by any means on good care, I think we'll see a lot more people who will, who will go abroad. So what, what are the options? South Korea and possibly Colombia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's you, different. Like, are you nervous at all? I mean, you've never, have you ever been abroad? No. Uh -uh. Never been abroad? No. Lisa is on her way to a travel agency in Los Angeles that specializes in medical tourism. What, if anything, do you know about the doctors? Just where they went to school, as far as the South Korean doctor, yeah. um, where he went to school, and he actually was trained here in America, uh -huh. but he's from South Korea. So it's not like a total mystery? No. Uh, what about uh, Colombia? I have no clue yet. It's I'm a big change, it's like South Korea, Colombia. Yeah. Have you been here before? Not actually in the office. Come on. Now understand this. America does have the best health care in the world, if you can afford it. And for the rest of us who cannot, our medical tourism becomes a alternative. Rudy Rupek is the CEO of Planet Hospital, the agency that is arranging Lisa's trip. So system fails them, and so it's kind of like a, a last resort they come to you? We've had a lot of these situations, a lot of them. There's, she's the first who actually worked in medicine that, has, that, that medicine has failed her. For the very first time, Lisa gets a passport. Columbus, Mississippi. And your occupation? Um, I'm a cleaner, house cleaner. I'm so used to saying surgical tech, it's weird because I don't do that anymore. In Houston, Kenny is making final preparations for his surgery in India, which is now just 72 hours away. Today, I'm putting together the horribly gone wrong list to give to my daughters in case something does go wrong on the trip. It's got all our bank account numbers, all our access codes, our passwords, all that business yeah. in there in case, in case they need it. So putting this list together, does this, does this become all the more real? Oh yeah, that, that's right. That, brought, that made it real to my wife too. She started getting nervous when she started to deal with all that. It does make you think about uh, what you're gonna do, but even here you have the same kind of risk and the risk reward for going over there is, is great. It's the same risk reward that's leading Lisa on her journey. Whether it was Colombia or South Korea or India. The most important thing is that I'm not going to have the metal in me anymore, you know, so I wouldn't have to worry about some festering infection killing me. As Kenny's departure approaches, the reality of what he's about to do sets in for both he and his wife.
I'm apprehensive about going under the knife because you know how I feel about it. Doctors. And, uh, and See, I know that he really researched the doctors and he's really researched the hospitals because all that makes him very nervous. I've got my skates out over here in the corner to remind me one of the reasons I'm doing it is where I can skate again. I'm just nervous about the surgery more than anything, not so much about the travel. Coming up. I caught myself a couple times going, man, he's in the wrong way. <laughs> Well, India was just definitely a culture shock from Texas. You know, I'm, I'm a bit ner nervous about the surgery. It looks like a muscle suit. <laughs> Everyone always dreams about, you know, having their career, getting married, starting a family. No one ever thinks I'm gonna have a career, you know, get married and... <laughs> Karen and Ryan Asher have been trying to conceive a child for the last three years. Unsuccessful, they've now traveled more than 3,000 miles from their home in Albuquerque, New Mexico to Barbados. This tiny country in the Caribbean has become a hot spot in recent years for couples seeking in vitro fertilization, a procedure that can increase a couple's chance for pregnancy by fertilizing a woman's eggs outside of the human body. IVF here is how much compared to what you would pay it's in the US? It's half the price of the states. So is insurance taking care of any of this? None. Nothing? No. Zero. Wow. It's estimated that by 2012, medical tourism will be a $100 billion industry. With medical costs and the number of uninsured soaring in the U.S., so too are the number of Americans seeking medical care abroad. The world is getting smaller, really. We are serviced daily by a lot of American flights from New York and Florida. And Barbados are very safe. And if at the end of this people aren't pregnant, at least they feel they got something out of it. They came to a beautiful island, they had a lovely holiday, and you know, it makes a big difference. In the States, it just feels like it's a billion dollar industry. And I don't think anyone wants to feel like they're on a, a conveyor belt, you know, like, you know. As long as you turn back up here on Wednesday morning, those are the most important things. Okay, everything else, if you get it wrong, we can correct it, okay? Okay. okay. All right, good. I felt like they understood what I was saying to them, why I was ambivalent. I felt validated, and I think being validated makes a big difference. The second most stressful diagnosis that somebody can get after HIV is infertility. It affects every part of their life. When they walk down the street, they see a person who's pregnant. Their sisters are having children. Their friends are having children. And if they can't conceive, it seems like the whole world is pregnant around them and they never get a break from it. You know, I've done group homes. I've worked with little ones. And in my head, I go, I'm good at this. Very good. And you'd be excellent. You just feel like he's getting robbed of that. And that's what bothers me. It's more that I think about him. As the Ashers prepare to return home and await their results, other Americans are getting ready to head out. It's our last night tonight. Mm-hmm. You want spaghetti tonight? Yeah, I like spaghetti. Tomorrow morning, Lisa Long will leave her daughter with her mother while she leaves the country for surgery. It's going to be a surprise and they get to hang it up in the hospital. I traveled to India in anticipation of Kenny's arrival. In spite of breakneck economic growth in recent decades, grinding poverty and poor sanitation infrastructure continue to afflict hundreds of millions in India. But here, the city of Chennai has emerged as a premier destination for top-notch medical care.
I take a tour of the hospital where Kenny will be undergoing his hip surgery. How many international patients have come through these doors here? Oh, it's an average of uh, per day, it's like 20 if you keep uh, 600 a month. It looks like a hospital that I'd walk through in the U.S. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe a little bit more crowded. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the only difference. The Joint Commission Certificate. This basically tells any patient that yeah. the level of care that I will get here it is on par the same in the U.S. or anywhere in the world. Mm. Is President Obama aware oh. that more Americans are coming here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he do know. <laughs> what did he, he say about that? Yeah, he said, yeah. <laughs> I've got some work to do at home, right? <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> After 26 hours of travel, Kenny and his wife have arrived in India. I caught myself a couple times going, man, he's in the wrong lane. <laughs> or, or get in the lane, get, get in the lane. Well, India was just definitely a culture shock from Texas. When you drove up on the outside, the hospital didn't look like much. But then you get inside, it's nice. Well, here's home for six days, right? Yes. Investigations. You'll have a consultation with the cardiologist this afternoon who gives a fitness for a surgery. Okay. Far by a consultation with the anesthesiologist. And you'll have a full counseling session with Dr. Bose this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Day. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I'm a bit ner nervous about the surgery, and that's, I think, to be expected a little bit because I hadn't been cut on since I was a kid. That was traumatic. <laughs> that's why Tish is here. I, got, I brought a cheerleader with me. Just an hour after arriving, Kenny's tests begin. Later that day, Kenny meets Dr. Vijay Bose for the first time. A world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Bose specializes in hip resurfacing. How long after the surgery before you can start actually doing some more active things? I mean, it was it. You know, the general active things, you know, going for work and all that should be okay in six weeks' time. No okay. problem with that. Or if you want to bend your knee and touch your nose on the day after the surgery, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, really? no issues with that at all. The night before Kenny's surgery is also the eve of an Indian holiday. Outside his window, a celebration has begun, honoring Ganesha, the god of wisdom, prosperity, and good luck. Coming up, Lisa finally leaves the country. It's been a long road. Now. It's finally going to happen in like 24 hours. But has second thoughts. There's a big possibility that you still don't have pain. Last time I saw you, we were talking about going to South Korea, yeah. right? Probably one of the most technologically advanced societies on the planet today. And then that sort of went away. And then Colombia came along. You know, I thought, okay, you know, it's a little scary, but you yeah. know, I'm sure they have good facilities. What's happened since then? Like, why are we now on a train to Mexico? <laughs> yeah, well, basically, because in Mexico, I'm closer to my family. Yeah. You know, reality is if something did happen, which I don't foresee anything bad happening, but if it did, my mom could get down to me. You know what I mean? It would, it would be an attainable goal. It's been a long road. It's finally gonna happen in like 24 hours. And I almost backed out too. Did you? Yeah. How come? I'm scared. I am. I don't know why I keep saying that, but only because that's how it feels. What do you think you're scared about? Just everything I know that can go wrong. I mean, I know you're not supposed to think about all that, you know, but you have to on a realistic like, viewpoint realize that, okay. The shit could hit the fan. <laughs> yeah. 
once I'm well, I'm definitely gonna get some traveling in for me and Bethany both. Get out of this place and just go see other cultures and people and experience life. It's hard not having your family. I mean, I'm very, very glad that I have this opportunity, you know, and I'm really grateful that facilities all over the world are opening up for us. But it's not a cakewalk, and it's never going to just be easy to jump up and leave your family and your home and where you live and where you're comfortable, but go to a whole other country where you're not very knowledgeable about the language or the people or anything. Yeah. So You didn't want to come here. Really didn't. So that's just a waiting. You've waited five years, you can wait another five hours. Right. <laughs> a short time later, Lisa meets her surgeon for the first time. Okay, your ankle, I just want to make really clear to you that even we take the Turning out the plate and the, and the screws and everything, uh, there's a big possibility that you still gonna have pain. Dr. Bustamante, a certified orthopedic surgeon with over 20 years of experience in the U.S. and Mexico, is also concerned that removing the metal plates in Lisa's arm could lead to dangerous complications. If we take the plates out, it can grow bone between the, the two the two bones and then it can start and, and can get worse. So I, I don't think there's a good idea getting there in, in this right now. Dr. Bustamante does not want to operate on Lisa's arm, only her ankle. And even there, he foresees only a modest improvement. Now, am I going to still continue to have to take the back drum, though? Because mm -hmm. see, I'm, I've been on antibiotics since 2006 because I got MRSA in the implants. Every time I go off the medicine, then the arm starts to flare up again because of the titanium. So what do we do? I have to I just think leave that it we in can, there? We, you can get out of the medicine and see what's, what happens because your main problem is your, is your ankle. I'm just really distraught over having to keep the metal in because I know it's real simple to say that Oh yeah, we'll just leave the metal and quit taking the antibiotics, see what happens. But then three weeks later, I'm back in America and I've got an infection and I don't have any doctors I can pay to take it out unless I go pay $60,000. So let's, anyways, we cannot do the surgery the same day because there are two big surgeries. Okay. Let's do this. So either way, let's just let's, focus let's on let's the foot this. today. Let's do this today. Let's take some samples from eat the bone to the lab. Okay. And then after that, we'll talk about leaving that or taking it away. Okay. Hey, baby girl. Mommy will call back after surgery, okay? I love you so much. Everything's going great and wonderful, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Two days after arriving in India, Kenny will undergo surgery this morning. I think I'm about 40 minutes to kick off time. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Now, more than ever, both Kenny and Tish are feeling just how far from home they really are. Complex. 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 Let us observe a minute of silence to pray for the speedy recovery of our patients. Thing. 
Kenny's hip resurfacing procedure is about a five hour operation. I'm a little nervous. I can't wait for him to be out. He's been in pain for so very long. And I actually had to come so far to get here. I can't wait until the next few days to see how well he does. He's tough and he bounces back really quick from anything, so it's gonna be awesome. Coming up, Kenny begins the arduous recovery process. We are new wow. Birmingham hip. Bionic hip. Yeah, we call it 10 on 10. That's a perfect uh, post op appearance, you know? It looks great. If you're not adventurous, this probably isn't something that you'd want to do. <laughs> yeah. It's the morning of her surgery, and Lisa is having second thoughts. I'm really confused. If you're not going to take the metal out, then why are we going to cuddle me at all? But I'm here now. It's going to all work out. It'll be good. So this will be the last part, I think. It doesn't look like she has affection here. Yeah, the bone looks okay. Still, we're gonna take some of the bones, a sample of it. operating room they put something in there and it just took me right out and then when I woke up I was really confused because so I was wanting to know what had happened I said you're done I said well did it go good and went real well so I'm happy with that now I'm ready for rehab Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Have any of the doctors been nervous about your uh, <laughs> yeah, the your tendency therapist. to overdo it? Yeah, the physical therapist was yesterday. Well, as long as you don't start roller skating in the next day. <laughs> yeah, he told okay. me six months. We had a uh, communication problem on uh, Saturday night. The nurses didn't understand that my he wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get any pain medication the day after surgery. Oh. So Saturday night I didn't sleep at all. Last night I slept till 8.30. Oh, so good. It was like 12 and a half hours last night. I feel good today. Yeah. It's a big relief. Just down the hall from Kenny, we met another American patient who had just checked in. I'm either going to have a hip resurfacing or a total hip. Um, my family really couldn't afford to come, but they recognized it was the best option. And so. You nervous? Very. No. When Kenny found out that Julie was alone and apprehensive about her upcoming surgery, he offered to share his own story with her. I'm Kenny. I'm Julie. First couple of days, your leg is really stiff because of them sewing you up. But yeah. other than that, for me, there was a less of a pain inside my hip than there was before. Were you scared? Yeah, I was a bit scared. And I know how you feel. I know exactly where you, how you're feeling about going in tomorrow morning. And I remember the night before what I felt like. And, you know, it's, it'll all come out all right. Dr. Bose is a great, great surgeon. This is your x-ray done today. That's the, our new wow. Birmingham hip. 
Uh, Bionic hip. Yeah, this is what, what we call as 10 on 10. That's a perfect uh, post-op appearance, you know? It looks yeah. great. You know, all the activities that you want. You can make up for last time without any exceptions or anything you want. Contact sport, anything you want, that's fine, okay? I think it was money well spent to come over and get this done, but if you're not adventurous, this probably isn't something that you'd want to do. <laughs> yeah. Five days after surgery, Kenny is discharged from the hospital. So what, straight to the buffet? Maybe a shower. The bar? Yeah. <laughs> shower. I'm looking forward to getting out and about when we get to the resort, I'm not just sitting in a room. Part of the package deal that Kenny purchased for $8,000 includes five days of rehabilitation at a luxury beach resort in southern India. How are you doing? Hi. I like it. I can take recovery here. This is not a bad deal at all. I was expecting some dingy resort, but uh, for the last leg of your trip, for four or five days, you come to this beautiful resort and you get some outpatient rehabilitation. So I can see why Americans are doing this in greater numbers each year. Barbecue style chicken fried steak with barbecue sauce. Somehow I don't think you're going to get the same. No, I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. In Mexico, doctors removed the titanium hardware from Lisa's ankle. When I woke up, I was really nervous and afraid and crying the whole time because I was in so much pain. And Dr. Bustamante held my hand. He sat there with me. He said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you until you are fine and you're in no pain. I've never felt that way. I felt human. <laughs> It's a really cool thing to feel just like a person again. Sorry, I'm crying. It's just sad that I had to leave America to get good treatment, you know? When I know there's excellent treatment there. But I'm happy I came. Yeah. Coming up, the American patients come home. So I'll look it up to me. So do you have the results? Yes. The results came back. They were all in shock. The doctor was like, what were you thinking? Back at Apollo Hospital, Julie, the American who was down the hall from Kenny, has come out of surgery. I would tell everybody, come with a friend or family member. Because you just feel so helpless after surgery. You, need, you want somebody there who figures on your side. And even though you know everyone's very, very nice, it's still scary. But I figure in, if it, in the States, I would probably lose my house. And, you know, so you can walk or you can lose your house. Hey. Hey. So how are you feeling? What's, what's, do you have the results? Yes. The results came back negative. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a pretty, Pretty hard weekend that we when we found that out. Mm -hmm. How are you? Uh, how are you feeling now? I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm. Yeah. It was a very hard time. Yeah. Well, I felt better today until now, but I felt. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, no regrets about any of your experiences in Barbados? No. Oh, none at all. We're trying to just figure out what next step will be best for us. I don't, you know, I don't think we have a 
a, a plan. In Houston, Texas, there are over 10 accredited hospitals with orthopedic units, but Kenny Browning chose not to use any of them. Despite his motivation for seeking treatment in India, and the perhaps sad commentary that has on the U.S. healthcare system, Kenny is pleased with his decision. I had people when I got back going, man, it looks like you grew two inches while I was there. I said, no, I can stand up straight now. One guy, I've only known him a couple of years, and that whole time I've been kind of walking bent over, and now and I, I saw him a couple of weeks ago, he said, you're taller than I am. Now home for three weeks, his life is returning to normal. I've got a lot of strength back in my legs because I'm doing like three or four times as much uh, rehab as they're telling me I have to do. I've already started doing a whole bunch of stuff that I couldn't do before. It's all looking up for me. It's been three weeks since my surgery. I am healing nicely. I'm already back at work. First house I cleaned, I showed up with my walker and they just kind of looked at me like, oh my gosh, you said you were walking. I'm like, oh, I've got this, I'm good. I already have more mobility than I did before the surgery. I had lots of little pieces of bone that would break and crunch around in the joint. And all that's gone, thank goodness. After her surgery in Mexico, Lisa went to a hospital in Los Angeles to have her staples removed. They were all in shock. The doctor was like, what were you thinking? You know, why'd you leave the country? And I, of course, got a little emotional. I'm like, I can't afford, you know, to have my surgery here. I had no choice. I felt like, you know, that was my only option left. All of a sudden, the doctor's like, you know, no, there's options here. And he basically waived his fee and I paid a significantly lower rate at their emergency room. It was almost as if Lisa's circumstances had finally shamed at least one doctor here in the U.S. to provide her with the care she had until now been unable to obtain. Once it was right there in their face, they definitely were more willing to try to help me get what I needed done here. We've got a system unlike any place in the developed world. No other country allows for-profit health insurance companies to control a healthcare system like we do here. They do an extraordinarily good job uh, of making money and satisfying their investors, uh, but they're doing a tragic job, quite frankly, of insuring Americans. So we're headed for a collapse of uh, our sickness industry. Do you see a day when the American healthcare system can no longer sort of take care of its own that people decide to come here in larger numbers? Definitely, yes. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, it's, it's sort of akin to the U.S. sort of outsourcing healthcare. If U.S. healthcare doesn't change with the present situation, it, it may happen. Your people definitely will look at this country. Maybe are ready. <laughs> Every 90 seconds, an American family will declare bankruptcy due to medical debt. Lisa Long is determined not to be one of them. Hey mom, I'm cleaning this place and then I've got one more to clean and I'll have enough money to come home. I'll have the rent. Oh, no problem then, babe, I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Okay, bye. <laughs> 